Hey, Loyalist family, and welcome to the info session for the Personal Support Worker Alternate Delivery Program at Loyalist College. My name is Ben Quaif. I work for the Marketing, Communications, and Recruitment team at Loyalist, and I'm very pleased to be joined by a special guest, Lisa Woodcock. Thank you for joining me today. Can you introduce yourself and tell us what you do at Loyalist College? Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Woodcock. I'm from Loyalist College Bancroft campus, and I look after the PSW Alternate Delivered Program. I've been with the college for just under 15 years and my heart and soul is really in delivering this PSW program. Thank you for that introduction and uh, let's just jump right into it because we want to give students who are considering entering this program a little bit of insight from your experience and you know, being part of it. So I was wondering Lisa if you could tell us uh, about the role a PSW uh, uh, takes on. So personal support workers provide supportive care to clients who are experiencing physical cognitive emotional and behavioral challenges. The main function of a PSW is to, to provide support for ADLs, which are activities of daily life, including dressing, bathing, toileting, feeding, assisting with mobility, and so much more. PSWs work under the direction of both the client and the regula regulated healthcare professionals, such as registered nurses and registered practical nurses. Excellent, great insights there. And we'll just move on to the next question. It's uh, what are some of the personality traits that a PSW student may have to provide um, to have an enjoyable career in this field? Well, to become a successful PSW, you really need to enjoy interacting with other people, talking and listening to them, and just enjoy helping them. You need to have the ability to work independently or as part of a team, but you also need to be dependable, flexible, and adaptable yet be able to show compassion, have patience, and be respectful. Some of our previous students that have taken this program have commented that they enjoyed providing care for their loved ones, whether their mother, grandparent, children, and just felt self-fulfilled from doing so, and therefore decided that caring for others was their passion and enrolled in our program. Excellent, that's great insight for sure. And uh, I was wondering if you can explain the program delivery. Um, you know, how it sort of rolls out and how many hours a day uh, students would be looking at with this program. Absolutely, Ben. So our PSW program is a one-year Ontario College certificate. It consists of two semesters and contains uh, 10 courses in total. Semester one is going to be a combination of in-class and hybrid delivery. The hybrid delivery will be made up of online lectures, readings, videos, mini assessments, virtual learning experience, and so much more. Our second semester courses run Tuesdays to Fridays for the first six weeks with two days of theory classes from nine until four and two days of practicum one, which is the facilitated long-term care placement, but it's shift work. So expect that you're gonna be working shifts. So an example would be 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. or 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Then the remain, remaining nine weeks of semester two will be placements in both a community and long-term care setting. Is it expected that the student will work the hours and shifts of their preceptor? As we all know, healthcare is 24 seven. Does the location of these three practicums have to be different or can an individual do two or three in the same location, uh, Lisa? Well, thanks for asking that, Ben. So first of all, practicum one is instructed and it's for 91 hours, meaning that all the students must complete this practicum during the same time period at a nursing home. Our instructors on site for the duration of this placement to facilitate the students learning and to help hone their skills that they practice during their labs. Then during practicum one, the students will be split into two groups. We'll have one shift starting on that day shift and one on the afternoon shift and then halfway in between. So within three weeks time, they'll switch shifts. And yes, everyone has to work both shifts, no exceptions. The final two practicum experiences are pre preceptored Students are mentored by a working PSW and the college provides a liaison to support the student and the preceptor to ensure that they are meeting the skills. So the long answer to that question is yes, uh, students will work or some of them will work at both uh, practicum one and practicum three at the same long-term care facility. Practicum two is a community experience and it's for 104 hours and students will be placed either um, with an agency such as VON, Red Cross, or care partners, or they could even be put into a retirement home to gain their hours. Lisa, would it be possible for a student to find employment uh, from the practicum that they're currently uh, on? 
absolutely been. Most times the PSW students are being offered employment positions prior to finishing their placement opportunities. This is why I always tell the students to put their best foot forward as the employers look are looking at them to see how they interact with their residents and their staff and to see that if that student is a good fit for their organization or agencies. I have the employers tell me that they are actually pre-screened before ever offering an interview and placements are just a win-win for them. Graduates can even find employment, uh, whether it be in long-term care facilities, retirement homes, community agencies, even in the hospital setting, some in school settings, or they can even hang their own shingle and start their own business. That's great. I'm sure that a lot of students are going to be interested in hearing that information, especially making the most of that placement, as you mentioned there. So that's great advice, you know, making the most of your time on placement so that you can, you know, turn that into a rewarding career. So just moving on here, um, in terms of uh, admission requirements, I know that a lot of students are always interested in that. What are the admission requirements for this program? So the admissions for the PSW program is that we look to see if the student has their grade 12. We're checking that they have a grade 12 English course at the general college or university level, or if they have their GED. But not to worry if you don't, uh, students may apply as mature students by writing an Accuplacer test. Excellent, thank you for answering that. And uh, moving on to tuition costs, I know that that's always a, a big point of uh, question for uh, prospective students. So what are the rough tuition costs that you can give us? So approximately our tuition is $4,000. And in that amount, we're including the approximate amount for the textbooks of $450, as well as supplies of $150. And these supplies, we expect that the students purchase uh, two burgundy colored scrubs, as well as a good white running shoes, because you're going to be on your feet a lot, as well as the Loyalist Crest and name tag. There could be additional cost as well, such as travel and parking, as well as for your non-academic record, which is your first aid CPR level C training, immunizations, criminal record checks, including vulnerable sector screening, and mass fit testing. Excellent. So we've given them a lot of great insights into this program and how it's going to be delivered. But let's say they finish watching this info session and they want to learn a little bit more about the program and upcoming dates and how to enroll. Can you provide us with some uh, info on that? Absolutely. Well, if, to enroll in the program is quite simple. Just go to www.ontariocolleges.ca. If you're looking for additional information, you can contact either Rebecca Hicks toll free at 1-877-309-0317 extension 235 or myself, Lisa Woodcock at extension 237. Or if you like to browse, you can check out our website at loyalistbancroft.com and find out further details. Excellent, that's uh, very, uh, that gives them all the info that they need. And again, we'll link that information when we share this video on our social channels, just in case the students are wondering how they can get a hold of you guys and ask more questions and learn more about the program. And um, you know, finally, just leaving kind of towards the end of our info session here, what are the deadlines for applications, uh, Lisa, as we kind of look into 2020 here? Well, the deadlines for applications, we determine whether the program is going to run two weeks before the anticipated start date. And if we met our target numbers, we'll still take accepting applications up to two days, or sorry, up to 10 days after the program has started. And once the student has been given an offer of admission, there's a deadline noted on their package for them to accept the offer, and then they'll be notified that their seat deposits are due. Excellent. So once a student has, you know, uh, discovered that they want to apply for the program, we want to make sure that they have all the funding options that are available to them. What are some of the funding options that they can uh, consider? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Ben. There's lots of funding options available. Uh, for example, OSAP, which they can apply for Canada Student Loan, Canada Study Grant. It's all one application at www.osap.gov.on.ca, or they may be eligible for second career funding. So they could check with their local career edge or community employment services. If they're indigenous, they could check with their local band office. There may be some bursaries or awards that are available. Sometimes even local legions may have funding available for students or a student could take out a, a bank loan, maybe be sponsored through an agency or if they have a registered educational savings plan. And then the last one of course, is they could self pay or make a payment plan with the college to pay for their course. Excellent. And are there uh, any options available for travel, childcare, 
uh, or residence that Loyalist College offers. So if a student qualifies for OSEP funding or sponsorship through First Nations or Second Career funding, they would likely be eligible for travel and child care funding. Unfortunately, at our Bancroft campus, we do not have a residence, nor does our outreach locations. Should a student wish to take the program at the main campus in Belleville, they can apply to stay in residence there. Is there anything that you'd like to add? We've touched on a lot of topics, but I'd just like to open it up to you if there's uh, something else you'd like to finish off on. I really just want to stress that there is currently a major shortage of PSWs in our area and the surrounding area. So there is lots of employment opportunities for our graduates. So why wait? Sign up now to begin your new career. Apply at www.ontariocolleges.ca. Thank you, uh, Lisa, again for joining us. A lot of great information here for prospective students. If there's anything, though, that we missed during this info session, feel free to leave us a comment uh, on our social media channels, and we're going to get back to you as soon as we can. And uh, as we mentioned, you can apply right now at ontariocolleges.ca. We look forward to having you uh, as part of the Loyalist family. Have a wonderful day.